Hello, I'm Chef Barbie Marshall here at WBOC's Historic Studio D. You're watching Delmarva Life. Chef Barbie Marshall in our kitchen today, and if the smell is any indication, oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to invent that smell of vision one of these days, one of these and you're going to get some of it too. Well, you know, we live in a world where some people don't like the idea of aging and the lines and wrinkles that often come with it. Well, a lot of people turn to Botox as a way to help smooth out the skin, but did you know that Botox can be used for a lot more than just beauty? Brian Spiros is at the office of Dr. Robert J. Davis in Salisbury to tell us how else Botox can help, Brian. Well, Jimmy and Lisa, Botox is very versatile, and we'll explain how in just a moment. But first, I want to introduce you to Rebecca Ospital, who's a physician assistant here at the office of Dr. Robert J. Davis. So first thing, if you had to sum it up, what exactly is Botox? Botox is a purified protein that's a neuromodulator that stops the impulse, the message to the muscles so they don't contract. And as we said, it has cosmetic and medical uses. We're going to start with the medical uses. People may not realize some of these, that Botox can actually help with migraines. How is that? Botox can be administered by a neurologist, the typical physician that you'd have do it, and they inject not only in the forehead area, but on the sides of the head, through the scalp, back of the neck and even that upper back area. This will help release that tension of those muscles to help the migraine sufferers who may have failed some other probably pill therapy, some medical therapy. So obviously helps with migraines. The other thing is is over an overactive sweat gland which is known as hyperhidrosis. How do you guys use the Botox with that? Hyperhidrosis is common in axilla area, which is underneath the arms, palms of the hands, soles of the feet. And by administering Botox in these areas, it stops the sweat glands from, from being overactive so you don't sweat. This type of treatment, although done um, not as common, can actually last for about six to nine, maybe 12 months. So up to a year possibly, Absolutely. it depends. So mm -hmm. people have that problem where they sweat profusely, the Botox can help with that. Absolutely. All right, so those are just some of the medical ways Botox can help. Let's talk cosmetic. What are some of the things you can do with the Botox when it comes to our face? What can't you do? So <laughs> what we like to do, probably the most common area is the forehead. We talk about the frown line. So when you're able to frown, uh, we can relax that, let the muscles um, kind of pull up and out so the lines are less noticeable. So the frown area, the lines that go across the forehead, another common area is around the eyes, something called the crow's feet. Some advanced areas that we like to do on the face, I, I inject the upper lip and that will relax any of those fine lines on the upper lip. I can inject in the, ch inject in the chin area which will help turn the corners of the mouth up kind of um, tighten up the neck by injecting the platysmal bands. And in addition, one of the other medical cosmetic, we inject into the masseter muscles. This will help with anyone who has that jaw clenching, grinding at night, but it also can make these muscles get smaller, so atrophy, so it starts to change the shape of your face. And we should mention with the neck that if people get stuff done to their face, you can't really forget the neck. It's a nice place to talk about something that is always on the side, but I like to talk about it when we discuss the Botox treatments. So don't forget your neck. Don't forget the neck. Now, let's talk ab about what's involved um, with actually getting Botox. We have this little tray here, and really it's very simple. What are th what's the process? What I do for every patient is I have them come in and we discuss um, what Botox is, what it can do for them. We talk about any side effects that come up. We'll take before pictures. We'll have you sign a consent form. Once I have you in the chair, we decide on which area or areas we will treat. I will pull it up uh, into the syringe. I will clean off any of the areas um, that we're going to inject with alcohol. It takes just a few minutes to inject. A little prick. A little prick. It's a teeny, teeny needle. Some of my patients don't feel it at all. After that, you might look like you have just little raised bug bites. They are gone by the time you get in your car to drive to your next destination. And what are some of the side effects? You can get anything from a headache to flu-like symptoms. These are things that are very temporary. They happen pretty quickly in about a day after getting um, some injections done. But they will obviously dissipate. They, they, they go away. Um, one of the other things I like to talk about with Botox, it's not immediate gratification. So you do want to time it with life. So you can get injected, you won't notice anything for about 48 hours. Which I was going to ask you about yeah. the time. So 48 hours and then what will happen after the 48 hours? It gets better. So in about 10 to 14 days is your final result. It's what it is and it will last you about three to four months from there. 
So obviously, so a very simple process and people can come in and talk to you. And I don't yeah. think many people realize the medical benefits that also come with Botox and Absolutely. the advances that have been made. All right, yep. Rebecca, a lot of great information. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. And of course, if you would like any more information on Botox for both cosmetic and medical use or the office of Dr. Robert J. Davis, all you have to do is go to our website, domarvalife.com. Click on the show tab. With that said, Jimmy and Lisa, we'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Wow, Brian, he, he doesn't have a wrinkle on his face. Not a so one. Not He's got one. nothing to worry about. That's a lot of good information. <laughs> it for really both men is. And women. I, mm -hmm. I didn't know all that stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, so many of us are looking for that secret fountain of youth. Mm -hmm. Is there really such a thing? Well, one doctor says we're pretty close. In fact, he says one procedure can turn back the hands of time when it comes to your skin. I'd spent my whole life in the sun, riding horses. All that time outdoors should have taken a toll on Janet Graham's skin, but this 52-year-old says one cosmetic procedure has kept her looking and feeling much younger. Dermatologist Patrick Bitter developed the photofacial. At this point, the photofacial procedure is the closest that we've come to the fountain of youth. The photofacial uses broadband light to stimulate collagen. Lasers burn and destroy the skin cells, but this type of light is different. It doesn't kill skin cells. What it does is it changes the skin and it changes skin cells. In one study, Dr. Bitter found annual photofacials resulted in skin that aged only one year over an eight-year span. In another Stanford study, doctors treated women in their 70s and found the gene expression in their skin cells looked like that of a woman in her 20s. This is the first study that's shown that we can have, that there's anything uh, available that we that can reverse or change gene expression. The cost is almost $500 per procedure. It can be uncomfortable and burning the skin is a risk. 48 year old Mary Shelton has seen immediate results. I think this is the first time I've seen something that actually reverses aging. Janet was one of Dr. Bitter's first patients. I can look in the mirror now and go yeah that's better. I'm happy with that. Uh, the procedure takes about 10 minutes. Dr. Bitter says for best results, patients should get their first five facials three to four weeks apart, then yearly maintenance treatments. He has trained more than 5,000 doctors around the world to perform the photo facial. Well, I'd say he knows his way around I the photo facial <laughs> intensity. Still ahead on Dumb Arbor Life, her passion for taking pictures has sent her on a journey around the world. Now, one award winning photographer is sharing her secrets on how to make good photos great. Someone else who has traveled the world chasing his passion, WBOC's chief meteorologist Dan Satterfield. He too has some breathtaking right. photos and Dan joins us next to share some of them. He'll also tell us about a project involving a group of NASA scientists from right here on Delmarva. Find out why they're taking a trip to the bottom of the world. But first, the Waterfowl Festival in Easton takes place this weekend and we are giving away tickets. Here's what we're going to do. We'll announce just two more winners of two tickets today and tomorrow. The tickets will be valid for all three days of the festival. To enter, just go to our website, delmarvalife.com, click on the show tab at the left side of the page, then select the contest tab that's located on the right side and fill out the form. Good luck. And by the way, congratulations to today's winner, Marianne Kaplinski of Milton in Sussex County. Enjoy that festival.